Today we uh, sort of righted a wrong. Uh, for years and years and years, most people credit Josephine Heron with uh, saving Lucy and, and spearheading the Save Lucy Committee. And while Josephine clearly uh, played an extraordinary role in Lucy's restoration, um, she didn't do it alone. And in fact, she wasn't the original member. The original member of the Save Lucy Committee was a gentleman named Ed Carpenter. He and his late wife, Sylvia, formed the Save Lucy Committee, and Joe joined them within weeks after. But it was Ed Carpenter who spearheaded the organization. And today, we dedicated the main entryway to Lucy as the Carpenter Walkway, honoring the legacy of Sylvia and Ed Carpenter and their contributions to saving Lucy from the wrecking ball. This is the Carpenter Walkway, dedicated to Sylvia and Edwin Carpenter co-founders of the Save Lucy Committee. Their first steps taken in 1969 saved Lucy from the wrecking ball and led the way to restoration of the world's largest elephant. We shall forever be grateful to Sylvia and Ed for their two decades of service and their love of our national treasure, dedicated July 2016. That's great. Yeah. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming. We appreciate it. My name is Jason Tell and I'm the board vice president. I'm here this morning representing our board president, Bob McGuigan, our officers, board of trustees, and volunteers. But most important, we're here to honor the late Sylvia Carpenter and Ed Carpenter, who is here with us today. Thank you. If I may, let me take you back to the late 1960s. Lucy was a much different elephant than she is today. She had been condemned as an unsafe structure by the city of Margate. She was derelict and an eyesore. When the Gertzen family decided to sell their land, Lucy was to be demolished. But one man could not let that happen. That man is Ed Carpenter. <laughs> Lucy is here today because of the efforts of that man. Ed, along with the late Sylvia, were soon joined by Josephine Heron, and this army of three fought naysayers and tremendous odds. They raised the money, found the movers, got a reluctant city on board, and made the impossible possible. On July 20, 1970, 46 years ago, Ed, Sylvia, Josephine, and their small grassroots organization made a dream come true. After eight years sitting dormant and falling apart, our beloved Lucy came to life. That historic move took nine nail-biting hours to complete. But by the end of the day, Lucy was in her new home. Ed and Sylvia's work had just begun. Architects, contractors, permits, and of course the money to pay for it all had to be raised. It took four more years, but once again, Ed and Sylvia performed miracles. For the first time since 1962, Lucy the Elephant finally reopened to the public in 1974. Still far from completion, much work needed to be done. Now, in addition to restoration, Lucy had to be operated as a tourist attraction. And once again, Ed, Sylvia, Josephine, and their committee rose to the task. Then in 1976, because of their tireless efforts, the United States government bestowed its highest honor on the elephant, designating Lucy a National Historic Landmark. Restoration took an additional 24 years and was completed in 2000. And as they say, the rest is history. So today it is only fitting that to honor and commemorate those first steps taken by Sylvia and Ed Carpenter, that we hereby dedicate this main entryway to Lucy, the Carpenter Walkway. We, we were contacted by Henry Gertson, who owned the property that Lucy and the hotel were on, that had to build the, that's where they were going to put the high rise. So uh, I, went to, I went to see Henry, and uh, he said, uh, well, I can give you a deed for Lucy, which he did, and 
I gave him a dollar. And uh, with the thought in mind that we were going to move her, we came down about a block and a half, and uh, it was around July, the beginning of July, I guess. Uh, but um, we had to we had to get a mover to work on moving it as well as getting it ready as far as where the elephant was going to be placed. You know, you, you talk about Ed giving the dollar to the Gertzen family back in 1970. The mayor of Margate at the time was a man named Martin Bloom. And we have documentation here on file that says the elephant will never see one penny of taxpayer dollars. The city was reluctant at best to allow the committee to move the elephant to this piece of land at Decatur Avenue. And they made the city, they made the committee jump through uh, many hoops to, to make it possible with insurance policies. And, and declarations and promises that if the elephant fell, which they all expected it to do, that the committee would be responsible for its cleanup and its, its uh, demolition, and, and the city wanted nothing to do with it. So uh, I went to their house and uh, uh, explained what, you know, what we planned on doing, and uh, he gave me the deed and I gave him a dollar. And uh, we set out on getting enough money to move her and uh, the necessary uh, pads that had to be placed to support her. And uh, the move, we got uh, a How Mount Holly mover for. I think it was ten six, ten thousand six hundred dollars, and uh, it was someday uh, to see the elephant coming down the Atlantic Avenue, heading south or to here, and the Atlantic City Electric and the Bell Telephone were taking down wires in front of her, and then another crew was putting them back up behind her. But uh, after she got on the site and everything, why one of the uh, engineers that was uh, giving us advice and everything, uh, he uh, he came over. My wife and Josephine used to have a card table with a with an umbrella. Uh, sitting here uh, just off the sidewalk here on Atlantic Avenue on the property and uh, he said well look he said if you hear any crinkling or scraping or anything get up and run <laughs> luckily we didn't have to do that <laughs>